back. If you've just joined us, you're watching Channels Television celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting. This is the news at 10. Here's a reminder of our major stories tonight. As Army Chief extends Olive Branch to the Niger Delta militants in the quest for peace in the region, two soldiers fear drowned during military operations. National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, pessimistic about ending human trafficking. NLNG warns of capital flight risks and loss of over a thousand jobs in the oil and gas sector if NLNG Act is repealed. And fire at an Ethiopian prison kills at least 23 inmates following a stampede and escape attempt. Just a quick reminder to you that all our top stories are on our website, channelstv.com, and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. And log on to m.channelstv.com to view us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS, and Windows phones from their respective stores. Besides the news and updates, the Channels TV app has an eyewitness feature. We encourage you to use it to share those pictures, videos, or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions. Airtel, the smartphone network. We can now share with you some of those pictures that were sent into our portal. And let's begin with this one from Cross River State, showing a muddy section of the Kalaba Ikom Road in Adim Town. Our eyewitness reporter is asking the government to speed up efforts to repair the road. Next is this picture of a man struggling to make his way through a flooded road leading to the Arara International Market in Aba, the commercial capital. Our eyewitness reporter wants the authorities to improve the drainage system around the state to protect the roads. And from Badagri is this picture of an electricity pole right in front of a building. According to our eyewitness reporter, other high-tension poles have been erected within the neighborhood in the last five days without any consultation. And he's asking those responsible to consider the danger this poses to their lives. Let's end with this one from Delta State, where we see cattle grazing on the Delta State Polytechnic premises. Our eyewitness reporter is concerned about the inconvenience it causes to the students of the Fine Art Department and urges the school to pay more attention to their environment. Airtel, the smartphone network. Thanks a lot for all your pictures, and you can see we're checking in with my colleague in Abuja. Here's Linda Akigwe. Linda. Hello, Ijoma. And the Minister of State for Petroleum, Mr. Ibe Kachiku, has refuted reports making the rounds of a possible increase in the prices of petroleum products in the country. Dr. Kachiku and the Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation at NPC, Mr. Mikantibaru, were both emphatic in the refutal of the rumored agreement with the Minister of State of Petroleum asking State House correspondents today if anyone has seen a memo to that effect. This refutal is coming after the forum of former group managing directors of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, called for the price increase and sought the removal of price cap in the pricing template. The former GMDs had in a 12-point communique at the end of their meeting with incumbent GMD of the NNPC, Mikantibaru, said the price cap of 145 naira per litre of petrol was not in consonance with the liberalisation policy. The federal government has been assessing the performance of its rural finance institution building program Rufin in Adamawa State, northeast Nigeria. Rufin, which is sponsored by the International Fund for Agriculture Development, IFAD, is given the rural poor access to finance as well as training on financial management and record keeping. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture has given assurances that the program would not deviate from its goal of reducing poverty. The Rural Finance Institution Building Program, Rufin, 
is a loan agreement of 27.2 million U.S. dollars between the International Fund for Agricultural Development and the federal government of Nigeria with the objective to develop and strengthen microfinance banks, other member-based microfinance institutions, and increase access of the rural populace to their products and services, and in the long run improve agricultural productivity and micro-small rural businesses. The Special Advisor on International Donor Partner to the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mr. Ape Auter, leads a team to Adamawa State to see how the program is working. We get money, mm. other people from outside will come borrow from you. Mm. Mm. He then meets with beneficiaries mainly from rural households in Shelling and may her local government areas in Adamawa State who are counting their gains. We thank God very much for the thing. Before, before the thing coming, we don't know how to you know, use our, the business to benefit. We can get money, but we don't know how to save it. We don't know how to use it to make profit out of it. We can be paid with money, even in the matter we will spend the money there. But when the thing coming, they told us that we should know how to save our money and save because of tomorrow. The deputy coordinator for Ruffin encourages the groups on the need for continuity. For us, where they Ruffin, our aim for you is to grow very strong so that you have plenty money for other people within this, uh, this city to come and buy, borrow from you. The program, which has been implemented in 12 states Katsina, Zamfara, Adamawa, Bauchi, Benue, Nasarawa, Lagos, Oyo. Akwaibom, Edo, Anambra, and Imo states is expected to end in 2017. Less than a week to the Edo state governorship election, some candidates were sitting for the West African Examination Council General Certificate Examination in Edo state once the election postponed. The protesters who stormed the government house Benin City with placards bearing various inscriptions said holding the examination and the poll same day would disenfranchise them. They also took their protest to INEC office in Benin City and the People's Democratic Party Secretariat in Benin City, the Edo state capital. These protesters are gathered for one purpose, to see the Edo state governorship election scheduled for the 10th of September 2016 postponed. The group is said to be made up of candidates in the ongoing West African Examination Council General Certificate Examination built to set mathematics on the day of the Edo State Governorship election. They arrive at the Edo State Government House chanting their message. Governor Adam Sushumale receives them. The plan to relocate us out of Edo State, our state, into other regions to sit for the examination because of the September 10th election in the Dutch state, as scheduled by INEC, is an easy way of affecting our chance to perform well in the examination. Please, sir, I want you to look into this case. I know election is important, but please, our exam is also important. Taking our children to outside neighboring states, we have to think of accommodation. We have to think of feeding, and it's going to bite into our already lame paws. The governor assures the protesters that their grievances will be channeled to the president. I know that the president is concerned about the future of our children. He has even talked about employing teachers under a special training program to give youth employment. If those youths are not educated, then those youth will be unemployable. Yes, so I believe that we have a president that cares. We have a president that listens. And therefore, I will convey your message, your cries to him. To further press home their demands, they made their way to the People's Democratic Party's Secretariat and the state head office of the Independent National Electoral Commission. election has been fixed long time ago. The whole world, international community, they are all coming to uh, observe this election all over the world. So how can we just because... Uh, of something that does not have a direction. Relevant authorities are now left to look into the situation and find a resolution 
as the time left is rather short. As part of measures to revamp Nigeria's depressed economy, the federal government has commissioned 28 additional centers for the production of combined expatriate resident permits and aliens card. The development which brings to 37 the number of such centers in the country is aimed at automating the operations of the Nigeria Immigration Service for the issuance of resident permits to expatriates residing and working in the country. Commissioning the centers in Abuja, the Minister of Interior, retired Lieutenant General Abdurrahman Dambazo, explains that the new structure would ease the stress of doing business in Nigeria. The centers are now in all states of the Federation, except Boronu and Yobi states, which were exempted for logistics reasons. River State has two centers. And still ahead on the news at 10, Nigeria's former head of interim government, Ernest Shoneko, suggests incentives to revive Nigeria's alien economy. That's in business news. Join us again.